is called Shaker Campsite. It was an old Shaker settlement back in 17, 1800s. There is still a stone foundation from one of their buildings and that is the backdrop for the picnic table at the site and it was a beautiful site. There were four other campers there. Had a good night, really good night's rest. After almost 18 miles hiked yesterday, which is the longest I've done in a while since Pennsylvania, and uh, I felt pretty good. Today, we have a couple adventures. One in about five miles, there is a lovely person that has put out a snack bar by the road. It's self-service honor system, cold drinks, snacks, a charging station. So I'm gonna take advantage of that for a lunch break top off my phone and nine and a half ten, or ten miles I am stopping for the day and will be camping at the Upper Goose Pond Cabin which probably is the number one shelter that I have wanted to stay at during my hike and I'm really excited it's going to be nice weather today and it's 6 20 in the morning right now so I should make it there in plenty of time to enjoy the place. There is a pond, there are canoes, you can swim. There's a cabin, you can sleep inside on a mattress. There's a caretaker there. It's supposed to be beautiful, and actually I know it's beautiful. Uh, Jedi stayed there last year. I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, but first, I have to navigate, oh, crossing like a muddy bog. I have to get five miles to the snack bar. Oh, and uh, my friend Hambone is coming, but he's a much faster hiker. And the only way I can get in the miles I want to do in a day is to get an early start. Some people get to sleep in and then they still pass me later. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I've come to terms with that as part of my, my hike. I get the same miles done. It just takes me longer. It's okay. Dang, I just saw the coolest thing. It was a little tiny hummingbird. I have never seen one so small. It might be, I think there's like a butterfly moth hummingbird or something like that. So tiny and I couldn't get it on video because the thing is fast. I thought it was a butterfly at first. And you know, he seems to be gone. He's in. He was in this field behind me with, there's a bunch of wildflowers going flower to flower, just doing his thing. I stood there and watched him for like five minutes and um, it was incredible. I've seen, obviously seen hummingbirds. They're usually going to like my feeder or people's feeders or flowers that are planted and I'm trying to think if I've ever seen one in the wild. I don't think I have. That was really cool to see. This is zoomed way in, but I came upon this over on the hill. I'm assuming the white building is the house. Look at all those outbuildings. Might be one or two houses. Barns. So pretty. I really feel like I'm getting the New England experience. I see so many beautiful farmhouses and pretty barns out here. I love that. The sign was laying on the ground next to a white blaze. Specifying that we are entering the Terringham Cobble Reservation. Well, there's a bunch of rules. You can't camp or have fires. And now Terringham, based on the Shaker campsite, was where the Shakers had settled. And I'm wondering if this is part of their village. <clears throat> I know they settled out here to escape persecution from Christian groups. Shocking, because they were different. And <clears throat> other than that, I'm not sure what the Cobble Reservation could be, but I... I'm going to look it up later and have to learn about it. Cheeringham Cobble seems like a whole other place to explore. There's apparently a structure, but it doesn't appear to be on the Appalachian Trail. I may have to come back one day. I see the sign that says to Summit Vista, which probably means the climb will continue. Time for a Pop-Tart. Need that sugar to get up the hills. Until I started backpacking, I never would have understood the joy of finding something as simple as a picnic table in the middle of the woods. 
<laughs> but here I am. Thanks, whoever hauled this thing over here. Look at that view. Also, it's under some trees for shade. Uh, although that seems to be the only place they could have put it. That's still handy. I'm going to take a little break. Oh my god, there's Freezy Pops and ice cream sandwiches. If you wanted a dozen eggs. Oh my god, there's candy. They even have feminine products. God bless them. It's a llama. Alpaca? Look at the pigs rolling around together. <laughs> hey there, I'm about four miles in or so. I'm doing what I call a baby climb. I mean, it's elevation, but no boulders or anything. Really nice, smooth trail. I am dying out here, and I was talking to a friend. I'm like, I don't know if the difference is markedly different since I came back on trails and after my break. And maybe I'm just looking for excuses, but part of me is like, did I do damage? I was hiking all day in that 400 plus air quality. And maybe my lungs are still healing or this is just the way it is now. I won't lie, I'm a little nervous about going further into New England. Uh, struggling like this on these hills in Massachusetts, but this is training ground for the whites. And if my new pace is just take a few steps and stop and catch my breath that's the way it is i have to be okay with it it's just weird when something's suddenly different Whew. anyway i had a wonderful break at that trail stand as you saw what a beautiful little farm we watched the alpaca and pigs and little ponies play and i only have about let's see i don't know how far not too far to the goose pond cabin and I'm gonna take a dip in that pond. I cannot wait. <laughs> Behind me, you can see Upper Goose Pond. It is way bigger than I expected. Just up the trail here is the cabin I'll be staying at and it'll probably be about 12.30 when I get there. So basically I have the whole day on the pond to swim, canoe, take a nap, whatever. Oh, I'm glad I did the extra miles yesterday to make this possible to get here so early. And I just feel very lucky. This is going to be incredible. I can't wait to show you. I just came across back there a huge group of women that are section hiking. Um, and it's wonderful to see. They were all ages. And one woman was like, are you through hiking? And I'm like, yeah, I am attempting. She said, oh my gosh, do you need anything? Water, food? And I know the rule is like never turn down calories, but number one, I'm literally almost to the cabin. And number two, they're also out here backpacking. So I didn't feel, I don't know, if I wanted to take anything. So I said, no, thank you. Probably the wrong call. They may have had some good stuff. <laughs> anyway, that's fine. They can use it. I just think people are great out here in general. Um, I've actually never had any total jerks. Um, at most people are just not that interactive and that's cool because we're all out here for different reasons and I get caught up in my own thoughts time to time too. Anyway, I really appreciated that kindness that was extended to me. And now I wish I asked for some candy. Damn it. Well, here you go. A little history about how this even became a thing. Apparently in 1982, the Mohekanut Club 
for 72 years was here and they donated the Appalachian Mountain Club with this land. That's incredible. Probably an old fireplace from the Mohek Nut Club. Very interesting. Wow, what a gift, all this land. And the pond. All right, carrying on. We're almost to the cabin. Look at this blaze. The tree is hugging the rock. Very cool. Rock hugger. There she is. Big bright red cabin. Beautiful. Looks like a water station outside. 